Okay, so our prints are not turning out. Um, the mold lay filament is not uh, working the way that I was hoping it would. Um, as, as you can see in the video, it's kind of balling up and, and making this big mess right, you know, just kind of mushing all together. So I've come up with a theory. I've, I've tried changing a couple of settings. Uh, I tried changing my filament size, which by changing your filament size, you can either extrude more or less of the filament. Um, that's a way that we can control how much plastic is actually being put down on the build plate. The second thing that I'm, I, well, I haven't tried this yet, but I'm gonna, I'm kind of doing a partial experiment. But the second thing that I think is happening, I can't remember what it's called, but it's basically where your hot end is sitting right on top of your print, and you can actually see it in the ABS prints. Um, here, here's an example of, of what I'm talking about, uh, right here. So I don't know if you can see this in the, in this or not, but. Right there on the tip of the tail, of course the camera wants to focus on me, but right there on the tip of the tail, well that is hard, you know, you're filming backwards, but on the tip of the tail you can see where it's kind of warped, and that happens because the print head is sitting there for a long period of time, and it's it's going around and around, and it's going and printing several layers right on top of each other in a very small confined area. What ends up happening is it ends up heating up the actual print itself. So to eliminate that, what you do is you put two, two items on the bed. So for example, if I was to print two dolphins, you know, uh, we would not necessarily get that because the head would move over to the second dolphin, would move over to the second tail, and then that would allow the other tail to have the opportunity to actually cool off. Uh, and then back over to the next one and so on and so forth. So there's two things that I could have done to try to make these smaller prints turn out. Uh, one thing that I could have did was I could have tried putting two on the build plate further apart from one another. That way the, the print head would have a chance to, to print this one, move over, print this one, giving the other one the opportunity to cool which it's evident as if when you watch the footage it's very evident in the footage that that is what's happening it's heating up the print to the point where it just kind of all becomes jelly and mush because it's it's not getting a chance to sol to solidify so uh, what I'm doing now is because of that theory I'm actually making a I'm gonna try I'm jumping right from doing a test to let's try a full print I want to see what happens when I try printing a full-size dolphin. If if it works, then we know the theory was right, that that's exactly what was going on. So it's processing right now, we'll fire it up, we'll do another time lapse and see what happens. Well, the only thing that I could think of as to why it's doing that is my hot end is too hot. I wonder what happened if I cooled it down. Okay, so that was an epic fail. Fail! My kids watch the videos constantly. Epic fail. We should have epic fail 3D prints on the bigger print. So, I changed some settings. I lowered my temperature and I increased my retraction rate. Hopefully that's enough so that I don't get the blobbing and the, and the little uh, feathers coming off of it. And I also decreased my temperature. Um, I started to notice it, it it seemed like it was just coming out a little too oozy, so we'll see what happens.
I did a quick Google search, uh, and I basically typed in curling on overhangs is what I use for my search terms. And what I came up with was that the speed is too slow. So basically what I was saying is that the, the hot end is sitting there and it's going around and it's heating up that area. And because it's moving too slow or it's sitting there too long, it's heating up the part. And on the overhang, since there's no mass underneath it, it causes it to, to want to go towards the heat. So that's what causes the curling is the amount of time that it's hanging there or you know the, the amount of time that the extruder is sitting there and spinning and heating. So the solution is to crank your speeds up. And I've ran this printer pretty fast as far as the the travel speeds. And that's what you want to increase is how fast the, the head's moving. So I'm running at 120 millimeters a second. But when when you crank the speeds up like that the printers just make a racket. And it, I don't like it because it's hard on your printers and ABS, you can run ABS a lot slower, you know, um, one of the big things with ABS is if you're not getting the adhesion between the layers, uh, where they, the layers actually start to delaminate and they'll actually start to warp in, uh, in the, as the layers get higher. What you want to do is you want to slow your printer down and you want that heat to hang there a little longer so that it'll actually weld them parts, weld the, the layers together where PLA, PLA is apparently opposite. You want it to haul the mail as it's going because the longer it sits there, the, the more tendency the PLA will have to, to curl. Um, it didn't sound like the fan was the solution because uh, the guy that was complaining about it was running a fan and he said, hey, it, it's not working. And he was running about the same speeds that I was. It was running about that 40 millimeters a second or uh, yeah, 40 millimeters per second of travel. So change that, we'll try another test print. ridiculous but I think this particular material would work really well for boxy items you could say uh, not you know because I print I printed a calibration cube 20 millimeter by 20 millimeter by 20 millimeter and I even got the same effect even on that uh, where it, it was dishing and flaring up the outside edges just a little bit so I just I just don't think this material unless a fan is gonna help with some of the the warping I don't even want to call it warping because they they claim that it's low warp but it's rolling up on the very ends which is just it's, it's really weird that it will do that I'd like to see some other people post some videos of their work with mold lay filament and how it works for them because uh, I'm just not having any luck and it's not it's not the printer settings I, I've pretty much ruled that out I don't believe it's the printer because the prints are the prints that I am getting are actually really nice. I mean, I'm getting good adhesion. I'm it's there. I'm getting good prints, and the print quality is there. It's just this rolling and warp. And they say it's low warpage. Well, it might be low warpage on the bed, but if you have warping within the part when it's printing, that's not going to work either. I am suspicious about this stuff is because I haven't seen any 3D prints with it. I haven't seen anybody really really printing with this stuff. If if I could if I seen other people printing with this stuff, other than the the advertisement of the company that sells the material, 
I would be more impressed with it. Um, I, I would actually be, okay, I'm doing something wrong. But because I don't see that, I don't see videos, I don't see any reviews of the particular product, here's my review, here's my proof, I, I can't do it. Uh, maybe it is that I need a fan, but leave a comment, let me know what you think. Hey guys, so I just wanted to give a quick update on the Moldlay filament. I was actually able to make a uh, successful print. Uh, what I did was I started with a print that wasn't, um, didn't have a rolling overhang to start with. It was actually a more solid print. Uh, and it was of a deer head. Uh, the, the body of the head built really good. The support material built really good. And also the antlers actually built really good. I did get some of the curling on the antlers when it was printing, but that actually turned out okay on that particular print. Um, I ended up increasing my layer height. So instead of printing at uh, 0.1 millimeter or 0.1.5, uh, I ended up setting it at the two millimeter layer height. Actually, yeah, I think the last setting I had set it at was two millimeter or 0.2 millimeter, not two millimeter, 0.2 millimeter layer height. And what I found was that uh, it, it has to do with the elasticity, how much the, the filament expands. And when you're printing at the lower, at the very, at the smaller layer heights, it will squish out a little bit more. And if it squishes out that little bit more, when it goes to cool, it'll shrink up and that shrinking is what is actually causing that rolling. So when they, when you go with a higher height, you're not pushing that filament out as far. And it, they use terminology of elast how elastic it was, how far it pushed out, and when it cools, pulls back in. So by going with a little bit higher layer height, I was actually able to limit it. Um, like I said, I still experienced it in some of the smaller, finer areas of the print, but I think I can eliminate that by going just a little bit higher and also increasing my temperature just a little bit. Uh, Cause I was printing that particular print at 150 degrees Celsius, which is actually quite low for this particular filament. Uh, I think I would try it at 160 next time and see how that goes, but I'm gonna put a picture in of that print uh, right after this so you get an idea of that the filament does work um, it just it isn't working at the really fine layer height or at the fine resolution uh, which is what I want from my printer I, I want to get that finer resolution in order to do that I'd have to get a finer nozzle anyways here's the picture be a judge for yourself